Did you know that there is a 100% free, open source, modern design and prototyping tool that rivals the competitors? It's super duper amazing and it's called PenPot. I've been using PenPot a lot lately. It is a really great tool and it blows my mind that it's open source and free for anybody to use. It is fully featured, it is really smooth, super awesome, and PenPot has just released some new features that revolve around Flexbox and Flex Layout. It gives you fine-grained, detailed, responsive control of your designs. And so today I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of PenPot, how it works, and some of the mind-blowing features around their new Flex Layout tools. All right, if you want to learn a little bit more about PenPot, head over to PenPot.app. You can get all the info here. You can download it for free. They claim it's going to be forever free. That's absolutely mind-blowing. And it is a thriving community. And you know that's true when they are throwing their very own conference called PenPot Fest. It's coming up here at the end of June 2023. It's in Barcelona, Spain. I am actually attending, which is so mind-blowing. And you can actually register for free for the online event. I encourage you to do so because this is a great growing and thriving design tool community that you can actually be a part of. So definitely sign up for that and check out PenPot Fest. Now, after you sign up for your 100% free open source PenPot account, you can use it in the browser and there are some options to actually use it on your desktop. You can see I actually have the PenPot desktop app installed. It's running over here. It's super great. It's super smooth. I like to use things in the browser, but once we're inside of PenPot, you can see we have all the stuff going on. We can break things into projects. We have Here's a website I was designing using PenPot. It has all the modern tools, typography, color, imagery, gradients. It has responsive nature. It has your basic tool set over here on the left-hand side. It has pages. You can have assets, components. You can have design libraries. And you have your design prototype and inspect mode. Now, here's what I will say about PenPot. Their inspect mode, like we were talking about earlier, is 100% apples to apples, exactly how you'll get things on the web. So the code here is literally copy and paste, plug and play, CSS classes. It is super dope. And all of that code, again, is one-to-one -one perfect code for Flexbox, which is one of the most powerful tools you can use right now as you are designing modern websites. So obviously, PenPot is an amazing design tool, and you could definitely start using it right now for free. But let's talk about the secret sauce, the fire that is their new Flex layouts right here inside of PenPot. All right. So I have some text on my screen. It, you can see over here on the right-hand side that it, is, it has all the bells and whistles of any modern design tool. I can change my text and all of that fun stuff, but I'm gonna go ahead and either right-click on this and I'm going to add flex layout or I can just press Shift A. And so let's do that. I'm gonna hit Shift A and it turns it into a flex box. And you can tell because it has our special little icon over here telling us that's a flex layout. And again, we have all of these awesome options, but again, you still have all of those normal abilities to do things like fill this button. So let's make it a nice blue button. Obviously, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna change the text color. Uh, so let's select the text that's inside and let's make that text not black but white and okay what else do we want to do we probably want to add just like a little bit of padding all of that stuff is there let's round the corners first we'll give it like eight pixels of you know border radius and then we will add a little bit of vertical padding right 10 there let's try 10 there look all of a sudden we have a nice button now we can make this button into a component but because it is a flex layout right it's using flexbox it is able to extend right so for instance if we were to copy and paste we're going to get that button to expand it's totally responsive it's feeling good it's looking good like it should all right, now that we have our button made, maybe we would like some iconography inside of our button. To do that, I've actually opened up PenPot's design system that's built inside of PenPot, and we can go in here and just grab some sort of button. Like, why don't we grab our little search icon? I'm just gonna Command C. I'm gonna come over here and Command V. I'm just pasting it in. And uh, why don't we just drop down the size and we'll drag it inside. You can see that, that our flex layout is going to immediately drop it perfectly into 
our layout. It's important to note that as you're thinking inside of Flexbox, and this is great if you wanna learn front end code or you wanna learn how to use Flex Layout inside of PenPot, is there's always some sort of parent and child relationship. The parent that we're looking at right now is actually the board or the object we've said, turn this into a Flex Layout. Everything inside of it becomes a child. What's amazing about Flex Layout is you can actually tell the parent to control the children inside of that container, or you can go in and tell the children inside of that parent container to do other things itself. So you have control over the parent and the children inside of that container, but they do have a relationship and it's important to note. Let's come back and we'll just start kind of showing some differences here. So here's some basic things you can do. We obviously have, if we were to, for instance, shrink our icon up, everything's kind of being tucked top left. And so we're gonna click on the parent container, the flex layout itself. And why don't we tell it to align all the items to the center? That feels really, really good, all right? With that done, why don't we kind of expand our icon out a little bit and make it a similar size as our text. We're back on the container itself, the actual button itself. And now we can add some gap, some column gap in between. Right, that looks pretty good. And we also have some row gap, and we'll talk about that later. But we also have the ability, like we said, to change the padding of the button. That's all on the parent container itself. Other controls we have on the parent container is the direction on how things are laid out in the flex layout. Right now, they're running left to right. If we were just to switch those up, it's gonna switch the button. Now what's cool is I can actually grab the elements inside and just using my arrow keys, I can actually switch their position or their priority inside of my stack or inside the layer stack. And we can always come back and determine whether we want things to flow from left to right or right to left. So you kind of get to set the standard and get really nitty gritty and detailed. Let's keep our text button Let's see over here on the right hand side. Let's just try that for instance. We can also flow things from top to bottom or bottom to top, right? So we have the options there. Now we also have some really cool things here, right? So as we're clicking and uh, on our board, right? We also have the alignment options. Alignment inside of Flexbox we've already talked about is top, middle, or bottom. We have justification settings, which is we want everything to start from the left. We wanna make sure things are justified in the center. You're not seeing any changes here, but you will later as we kind of play with these, right? And then we also have to the right, but we also have justify content in some pretty special ways. One of those being justify content with the space between. We can uh, honor the space around it and we can also justify the space evenly. So let's try space between. And before we talk about the differences between these, let's talk really quickly about the flex board. Inside of PenPot, we actually have flex items. We have something called the flex board and then we have the flex layout. You've actually already seen us implement the flex layout on that parent container. We've talked about individually addressing the children. We'll get to that later. But as we interact with this parent container, we also have some options for the flex board. How do we want to actually treat this thing? Do we want to have a fixed width for our button or do we want it to fit the content always? And the same thing goes for horizontal and vertical. Right now, they're set to fit the content. But if I take our button and I start to stretch it out, you'll see it immediately kicks over to fixed width. We're dictating the width. Now we're gonna see some of those options be able to come into play. We are honoring the space between. That means we're keeping the items pushed out to the left and right hand edge. We can actually center everything and honor the space around it. What will happen there is as I start to stretch my button more to the left, it's going to try to honor the space around both items. We can also head over to justifying the content space evenly. It's going to try to evenly distribute items inside of our button so that if we had more items like for instance, copy and pasting more for some reason, if we wanted to have a button with three of these, we're trying to just honor the space in between items and around it as much as we can. And we're letting Flexbox do that work. Now let's go back up and talk about one of the features on the parent item itself. And that was the wrapping capabilities, right? Right now, if our item was to shrink below the available limits or the width or space needed for all that content inside, Nothing happens, it's just gonna expand out. But if we turn on wrap, immediately we get some sort of, not just responsive, but adaptive nature to our element that we're creating here. Now, once we turn on wrap, we get a couple of really cool options that you can see underneath, right? When there's no wrap, we don't get those options. When we turn wrap on, 
how do we want these elements to wrap, okay? Do we want them to align to the start of the content, to the center, to the bottom? Do we want to honor the space between? So far, we've only shrank our button down horizontally, but what happens if we start to expand this way? How is that content actually wrapping? Let's just check it out really quick. You can see it's expanding, right? And it's wrapping and it's basically right now, nothing, we're giving it no sort of like rationale what we want it to do. But if we make sure that everything is aligned to the start, that's the top, or maybe we want to distribute to the center, or we want to push everything down to the bottom when it wraps, we can also keep the space in between just like we could before. We can now do that vertically, right? So check this out. We go back to our button and as it starts to wrap like this, we can turn it back on hugging everything there and we can start to wrap this way. And as we expand our button down, it's always going to expand and keep the content pushed to the far sides, right? We can also, again, con like align the content for the space around it, or we can also try to space things evenly. So all this means is we get very fine grain control, how everything operates inside of our element, which I think is pretty cool. Now, so far we've talked about our item. I'm just gonna come in here and actually delete some of our uh, extra icons, we wouldn't need that inside of a button. And we'll come back and just make sure that it's hugging everything here. It's hugging everything here. We have this beautiful extendable button that if we continue to type new text in, we get that expandable component. It's it's just gonna be super duper amazing, right? Now, we do have some of those child options. So far, we've been clicking on the button itself, the outer container, the parent, and we get all of those fun options we've talked about inside. But now when I click on a child inside of the parent, we get some more detailed specific control on that element itself. For instance, right now, all of them are statically placed, but we could position something absolute if we want. We could pin it up to one corner or side and use our responsive kind of like uh, pinning here to make sure that the button always stays pinned to one side and you get all sorts of different options for like maybe active states or indicators or avatars, do lots of cool stuff there. When we click on our element, you can see we're getting those flex element controls, right? We're not getting our flex layout or our flex board, but instead we're getting those flex element controls, right? So again, static or absolute, we can also control the Z indexing, which is basically telling Penpot if you have multiple items, which ones do you want to put in front of the others? And we have, again, fine grain control. I just wanna take a quick moment to mention that if you are interested in PenPot because it's open source, it's free to jump right in, you might also be looking for an entry level course to learn about UI design and UX design. I have a course called the Intro to UI and UX Design that might be the right fit for you. We cover everything from typography, color, layout, a little bit of UX research and wireframing, and we wrap it all up into a capstone project so you can build your portfolio and get into the industry as a UI and UX designer. If, you're, if this course sounds like a good fit for you, then check the description below and get started in your introduction to UI and UX design. All right, let's jump back into the website project that I was working on previously, and let's see how we might apply some Flexbox magic to our current layout that we have already designed. We have a lot of really cool things going. Obviously, we have like our headline, cool imagery, navigation, supporting text, but I do wanna note that the, the design to delivery handoff here is really stellar. Again, it is a one-to-one -one design and code handoff. So that means the code is ready to be copied and pasted to start building websites. So I can actually select my hero headline over here that I have, head over to inspect, hit code, and you can see all the details of that class that's already been named, as well as all the details for it, the information, what color, you know, the font size, the font that's used. You can get that in either info mode or code mode, which is just super amazing. So we have, for instance, our bottom kind of area where we have like some iconography or logos, as well as some supporting text. We could grab both of those. I just held down shift and selected them both. I'm gonna hit shift A and turn it into a flex layout, right? Um, and then I can come in and name this thing if I want to and just call it supporting info, something like that. Uh, supporting info, beautiful. And now we can actually give it a little bit of a responsive nature as well as, because we have it in Flexbox, make some decisions, right? So uh, we have our our information here, simply by selecting one thing and pressing the arrows, I can rearrange if I'd like to, the organization of them. 
And I can also set anything I want to be absolute or how things might stretch and ebb and flow. So let's go back up here and we'll do a little bit of responsive pinning. I'm gonna make sure that it's on the bottom and always staying on the left. And that's gonna be good for us because if our website for some reason stretches, like maybe that's what we want it to do. So let's just set that up. Also, if things start to move left and right, we keep everything pinned to the left and right. We have that flex box installed. Why don't we actually do the same thing here? We actually have these as a group, this uh, button, and our button is actually built already using our flex layout. So, but why don't we grab the button and the text here and uh, we'll actually turn that into a flex layout, right? So we're just gonna right click on the layer this time. And by right clicking on the layer, you get the option to add flex layout to it. Look at that. It's gonna make that decision say, how do you want those things to be arranged? We're just gonna arrange them in the middle um, and that looks good to me. And again, we have uh, the way that we're arranging them left to right, I like that. What do we do though, if for some reason, this thing is to shrink. Well, I'm gonna want that to wrap. And how do I want it to wrap? I want things to stay. I like left aligned and uh, and I think I might, ooh yeah, I might do something just left aligned like that that has a little bit of gap here, like vertical gap in case it happens. So let's just plan on that vertical gap. And then what's great is I can drag this back out and it's ready to go, right? So if at any point responsively, for some reason, this thing changes, it will wrap for me. I don't need a plug in. I don't need some sort of extra artboard to showcase that. It feels pretty good, right? I like it a lot. All right, now I like both of these things, this my main headline and this new kind of like call to action area. I'm gonna call this CTA area. And we have our hero headline. Let's go grab both of those. Shift A, put those in its own flex layout. You'll see that uh, Penpot honors the decisions you make and the padding and the margins and everything that was already there, right? So let's go ahead and rename this thing hero in our layers panel. Let's check it out because it's already given us some gap in between the rows there, right? We've honored the gap. That feels pretty good. Now we, ha we have some kind of control over those. Let's see how smart Penpot is because we have these elements inside of a board. So why don't we just do the same thing here? I'm just gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say add flex layout. And I have same thing going on here for these. I'm just gonna hit shift A for that one. And we have the same thing going on. There's an element inside of our logo and then the text next to it. I'm gonna shift A that. I'm just gonna make sure that all of these are fairly center aligned. So everything feels really, really similar. And then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab all three of these and I'm gonna shift A and center align those. Now we've nested them. Now that we've added a flex layout to our navigation, there was a couple of changes we needed to make really quickly. We just made sure that it is pinned to the left and right. So there's some of that responsive kind of stretching that's happening. And we have the direction and we have the alignment and we have set it to justifying the content for the space between. But then we've come in and we've actually kind of grabbed some of those flex elements. We've said, hey, we want to have that center navigation with all the navigation links we want it to be width of 100 and we wanted this to be like a static sizing or we can maybe just fit it to the content and the same thing could happen for our logo area and now what we get is all of this detailed responsive nature to our navigation that feels really, really good. All right, we've applied Flexbox to everything. We are ready for handoff. We can select certain elements, move into inspect, head over to code, hand this off to our developers, and they can see all of the different ways that our flex layouts have been applied. The way things are aligned, the way that the content is justified, the direction of it, and actually applying flex so that we get that flex box functionality right there in the browser. And this is the power of using flex layouts inside of Penpot. Well, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you know when more videos like this one come out. If you have more questions about Penpot and Flexbox or maybe even signing up and attending Penpot Fest, check the description down below for all of those helpful links. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things and using awesome tools like Penpot in your workflow. We'll see you in the next one.